everyone. Welcome to Sugar Glider Diaries. I'm Kimberly. Today I'm going to show you how you can save tons of money on your Sugar Glider toys by shopping at thrift stores. So I'm going to show you if you are not familiar with how to shop for your Sugar Gliders at a thrift store, what to look for, and some things that are really common to find at thrift stores. How many times can I say thrift stores? A lot. So if you see me looking down I have my laptop here with the videos that I've collected and I'm going to pop them up on the screen here. So the first thing that is super common to find is floor toys. So these are large toys that you can put on the floor or the base of your Jure Glitter's cage. They love to look around in there, explore, use it as like a hide. You can also deck out these floor toys if you really want to by adding chains and charms and stuff, but you really don't have to. All you really have to do is make sure that they are safe so that the whole sizing is going to be safe and that there isn't any moving parts that their tails or limbs could get stuck in. Uh, I'm going to, in the description box, I'm going to attach a toy safety video where I go super into detail on that. Uh, you also want to make sure that you're, if there's, uh, if you have chewers, especially that if there's stickers or things like that, that they could rip up, that you might want to remove those. It depends on your gliders as far as if your gliders really mess with them or not, but keep a close eye on it. And if, if you have any question about it, just remove the stickers. But you can see there's some really cute little doll houses. Um, if you can find one that will actually close up and that they can still have passages and they can't get stuck anywhere, that's ideal. This one's a great one. I have it. I, all you have to do is remove that ladder um, cause that the spacing in that ladder is not help, uh, not a safe spacing, but besides that, that's a great floor toy. I love that one. I have that one personally in my gliders cage and you can see, you can get a great price on these, like five bucks for this huge showpiece in your cage and something that your gliders will love. This I just recently got and I'm going to deck it out. Uh, I'm going to add a bunch of the fake leaves that I'll show later in this video that I found at thrift stores and just make it like a kind of a natural theme uh, little hide for them. So I'm gonna kind of close some of those holes, not completely, but towards a little bit more private. My kids love going thrift store shopping as well, obviously. That was his treasure that he found there. So really great deal, six bucks for this huge thing. Some things will need to be modified uh, and some don't, they're just totally fine five bucks for that huge thing. I had my son pick it up so you can see how huge that toy is just in comparison, five bucks. Now, if it's a really large toy, you're gonna wanna make sure that you can actually fit it through your cage door. So like, I don't really have to worry about that because I have a double critter nation where the doors open completely up. But if you have a smaller, more narrow door, keep that in mind. But even if you have a cage that's too small, if you do like tent time or something like that, bring some of these large pieces in for them to explore. You can add little foraging cups and things like that throughout the cage or throughout the floor toy so that they can forage and find uh, treats and stuff in there. On this one, you could hang chain and charms and like really deck it out. You might want to block off that little tiny hole that I just pointed out there. Um, but you could just yeah, just have fun, use your imagination. So yeah, you can just get a ton of great toys, floor toys. You can just, I mean, I the only bad thing about floor toys is they do take up quite a bit of storage. So I try to limit myself. I probably have, I don't know, like six big floor toys and then quite a few small ones. I like swapping out my toys and you know, if they're four bucks each, as long as you have the room to store them. Some people put them on top of their cage to store them. Uh, so anyway, I did end up getting this. That's really cute. It goes with my like fall cage theme that I have. That one didn't really need to be modified either because all the, the windows and stuff were a pretty safe size. So there's like safety regulation sizes just in general, which I talk about in that other video. But if you are not sure about your gliders, uh, you can always put the item in, in a supervised uh, spot. So like in tent time or even in the cage, as long as you're there watching. And then you can see like, can they go in and out of those holes? If you've watched all of your gliders go in and out of the holes, then you're fine. Uh, as long as one of your gliders doesn't get chubby. So this is one good example of that. 
So those are probably a little bit smaller than regulation sizing. But I personally, what I personally would do, because I don't have any gliders that are super chubby at the moment. So you can, or like this one, um, I have a couple of those and they can fit in and out of there just fine. Um, but I've watched them do it. So I know for sure that they can. So, and don't hang it by that handle too. Um, that would not be secure. I got that one too. I'm a sucker. And I hung a bunch of chain and stuff from that big opening. So it made it a little more private. Took that sticker off because obviously it was a really easy one to remove. Okay, so another thing you might want to keep your eye out for is storage bins. So like bins that you normally like food storage containers work great for storing toys or toy parts if you're into toy making for your sugar gliders. So you can get really good deals on that at thrift stores, secondhand stores. And then foraging cups and food dishes. So if you go to like the pet section especially and you find like little um, dog dishes and things like that, that nice and heavy, this is right after Easter. So Easter eggs make really, really great foraging cups. These are those heavy dog dishes I was talking to you about. I use those all the time for my gliders. Supervised play. So this one is an item that I got for my tent. Uh, I show that in my day in the life video. Oh, thank you, lawn mower. Love you. Yeah, okay. Anyway, sorry about that. So this is a great one to have just for supervised, not actually to have in the cage because it's not the right material, but it's a fun thing for gliders to climb on uh, in the tent time. And then toy making supplies. If you are into toy making, there's quite a few things you can get. My favorite thing to get is fake leaves. So you get like these uh, trees or bushes um, and you just rub the edges to make sure they don't fray. They are awesome for toy making. All right, so I got this big uh, artificial plant at a thrift store. And you just take these leaves and you pull them off where they fork. You don't want the stem because that has wire in it. But these leaves all slide off the stem. Here, pull that off, Dalton, baby. Thank you. See? And then you can easily use these all in sugar glider toys. Ta-da! So this has wire in it, so you don't want that. But these, you want to look for ones that have this forked thing that you can pull off. And you also want to make sure that when you pull on the sides of the leaves that they don't, uh, not, no threads or any, they don't start to fray. But I'm going to get a lot of toy making leaves from this. Wash them really good and you can use them on tons of toys because it already has the little hole that you can put a zip tie or a like, little mini link through. It's awesome. Ten bucks for this. That's a lot of leaves. So you, you can always keep your eye out for this kind of stuff at secondhand stores, but do make sure that they don't have wire in them. So like this, you can see it has wire in it because when I bend the leaf, it keeps the shape that I bend it in. So that has wire. You don't want that one. Uh, but the other ones that I showed you earlier didn't have wire and they also had They also had, uh, they didn't fray on the edges. You can see this, I didn't end up getting that because it kind of frayed when I played with the edges. Um, and you don't want the little strings to get wrapped around their their fingers and things like that. Uh, this was in the toy, or sorry, the pet section. Uh, this I bought this just as an example of what not to get. This is a really common wheel that people get for the sugar gliders that's not safe. I'm gonna transform it into a toy. You can also get um, other just little toy things that you can, make modify and make toy bases i actually got that but then when i opened it it had mold in it so i threw it away so obviously there's a risk and especially in time it's like packaged where you can't really check it out you have to run the risk of it not actually working out but sometimes you can find other little you know rubber duckies and things like that these little fryer baskets are great for toys. You can hook some sea links on and just hang it on the side of the cage as like a little uh, toy box. 
Uh, you could use that as like a base for a cage if you wanted to hang some chain and have that be like a little hanging toy box. Super cute. You also, lastly, you wanna check out the shoe section. I didn't find any this day, but you wanna check out the shoe section because if you can find a, like a crock, those can be really, really cute. You can add charms and hang it and it can be like a little hide. You can hang foraging cups off of it, uh, make even make it into a pulley. Uh, so you definitely wanna keep your eye out for crocs because those are uh, plastic shoes that already have holes already in there. So it makes it nice for toy making. So that's the video. Hope you enjoy. Tell me all about your favorite thrift store finds if you have luck with your sugar gliders. And check out my cage tour videos because in those you'll see some of the things that I've gotten at thrift stores that I've either repurposed or used as a floor toy or whatever. So bye.